Good morning, grass monkeys. Good thing I don't sing for a living. Could you imagine? I'd be broke as a joke. I can't sing to save my life. Definitely don't want to pursue a career in singing. Anyways, we are going this morning to do an estimate on one of my customer's properties. He's got some low spots in his yard and he would like to have some topsoil added with some seed put down, which is no big deal. And the big deal is going to be he's not going to like the price. I already know that because I know every inch of that yard and I know where there's low spots and where things need to be leveled and topsoil needs added. But I don't think he's going to like the price because he's usually, he's a stickler on getting lower prices, but he always pays on time. He lives by himself. He's a great guy. He does not care one way or the next what I do, when I do it, or how I do it. And just super cool guy, so that's why I stick with him. Um, but yeah, so he's probably not going to like this price, but when I do topsoil work, I don't play around. I bring enough in to level out a low spot. I leave a little extra in there so you have leeway for when the topsoil settles and then I put down seed, I don't hydro seed, I just put down regular seed and I put down starter fertilizer and I have never had an issue of getting grass to grow. Never been a problem. Uh, depending on the size of it, sometimes I'll put straw down over top of that just to hold the moisture in. Um, but this stuff all kind of comes into play. Now I've had customers ask me before. Oh wow, that's a that's a hefty price for all that. Can't you do a little bit cheaper? I'm like, nope, nope. I do it one way. I do it the right way, and the right way costs money. And if you don't want it done the right way, you're gonna have to call somebody else. I won't do it because I'm not gonna be responsible when it doesn't come in the right way, when the grass doesn't match up to the type of grass you already have there, so on and so forth. I'm not gonna be responsible for that. Some guys I've I've seen they come in do topsoil work. And they plant grass seed and then the grass looks absolutely nothing like the grass that's already there it's a different color <laughs> everything it grows differently and that's because they didn't match up what's there um, so anyway I do it the right way or I don't do it at all but I'm gonna give him the price on that this morning and uh, I'm gonna go measure out for it to find out exactly what I need and then uh, I'll actually call him this afternoon what the price of what's gonna be and when I can do it and we'll go from there. I'm not really, as you guys know, I'm not really doing much of that work this year. Um, since I've switched everything to solo, I'm concentrating mostly on lawn service. And that's what I do. Um, mowing, things along that line. Uh, I'll still do some smaller work like this. And this isn't going to be a very big job. And I don't really have much going on right now anyway. It's still going to be a couple weeks before. This phone is going nuts today. Um, this... Uh, was I going to say? It's usually, you guys have heard me mention before, it's usually mid-May or so is the earliest I've been able to start mowing. Uh, typically in my area, it's the last week of May before mowing season starts. Um, I am about 90% confident that about the first week of April is when I'm going to start mowing this year. And I'm praying. I'm super stoked for that. I would love it. The sooner I get started, the happier I'll be. But in the meantime, I am going to take on a couple little jobs like this just to keep me doing something. All my equipment, trailer, everything is ready, has been ready. Um, I have never been this prepared for a season this far in advance. Never, never. I'm usually rushing to get stuff done because I have so much other stuff going on. I have so much plowing I'm still doing this time of year. Um, things like that. So I'm actually... Um, I am well ahead of the game right now. Um, so it leaves me free time to do stuff like this. Um, but anyways, I'm going to I'm gonna go there. I'm going to measure it out, and you guys will see that. I want to mention real quick, I have noticed they've been popping up like crazy um, on my feed and on my channel. There's a ton of new guys coming into the industry um, and starting to make channels. There's some guys that have had channels for a while but never had any videos up no content those guys are starting to put up some videos so that is that's super cool super cool i'm really excited about that i'm really excited to see other people's content and what they have to offer um, to the community 
good stuff, good stuff. Um, so I wish all those new guys, all you new guys that are watching, wish you the best for this year coming up and uh, this season. Like I've said a million times over, that you can go back to when I started, what, a year and a half, two years ago making these videos. Um, you can go back to the beginning and I've always said your only competition is yourself. So if you, uh, as long as you're determined and you're hell bent on doing it and you refuse to take no for an answer, you're going to make this life work for you. And you're going to make it happen. I know it's scary as hell starting off. It is for everybody. I still, sometimes now, you know, going into a new season, I'll get a little nervous. I'm not this year, um, but years past, you know, you still get a little nervous going into a new season and stuff. You don't know how things are going to pan out. And you're going to have your downfalls, your pitfalls, you know, things are going to break. It's just a matter of when and how bad. And uh, you're going to have those setbacks. And it's just going to happen. Uh, what makes you stronger as a person, as a business owner, is getting past and doing it. Anybody can do this. You guys can do this. As long as you have the um, the good attitude, a good work ethic, and you know, a positive mindset on this, and just be determined that you can do this. You know, you got any of you guys can start a lawn care service. Uh, you can make it happen. You know, you just gotta go out there, be a go getter, have a great work ethic, and just be determined to do it and do it better than the next guy. And uh, and you can make it happen. You'll see. Uh, there's a million different channels on here, tons and tons of different guys that will tell you their story about how they started with nothing. And, uh, you know, the largest guy in my area, which is a, a pretty big company, he started, he runs multi-crews every day from everything from mowing to putting in new lawns to landscaping to block work. He started off with a push mower in the hatchback of a Camaro. And he's huge. He's like... I think he's in his mid 40s and he retired out this year and he's selling the company to his a uh, to the guy that's been his right hand man for about 15 years but anyway so you can do it anybody can do it just you like i said you got to have those few things and make it happen um don't worry about the naysayers or the people around you saying you can't do it or you don't have what it takes or you need 30 grand 30 grand make this shit happen gotta buy a brand new truck brand new mowers you know what i say to that that's what I say to that. Kiss my ass. You don't need any of that crap, okay? You go buy the bare bone stuff, the bare minimum, and you make that work for you. You stretch it out as long as you can. You make it work, make that equipment, make everything you bought, generate as much possible money as you possibly can. And when you absolutely can't go any further on that equipment, then you go buy newer stuff. Then you start upgrading. Because now you've made that money. Starting off, you don't have a pot to piss in. And, you know, let's just be honest here. 90% of the people starting off in a landscape company like this don't have the best credit. You can't just go out and buy all of the brand new equipment, get it all on payments, because you probably sure as hell don't have the money in your bank account to do it. So you can't just go out and, you know, get loans on everything. I don't know how it is in other states. Maybe it's the same, but I know in New York State, almost all financing, whether you're buying a mower, a trailer, um, a jet ski, a boat, uh, any type of lawnmower, um, a UTV, a four-wheeler, they all use the same company for financing. It's called Sheffield Financial. You need a minimum, minimum of a 700 credit score for Sheffield to even talk to you. They will deny your loan right off the bat. And almost none of these companies will use anybody but Sheffield, okay? Sheffield are not the easiest people in the world to work with. Um, but that's who almost everybody uses. Like I said, I don't know if it's in every state. I know that's how it is in New York State. Um, maybe other states use Sheffield too. I don't really know how big they are. I imagine they're pretty massive. But that's the deal. Um, and that's what you got to do. If you're, uh, if you're going to go with all that brand new equipment, all that stuff, you're going to have to finance unless you have all that cash on hand, which I'm guessing you don't. Because if you do, why are you jumping into a lawn care business? If you, if you have like $30,000, $20,000, $30,000 in the bank, um, you obviously have a good career going that you were able to save that much money. So why are you breaking into a different career now? And I'm sure everybody has their reasons and I'm sure... You know, it's possible, I guess, maybe some people are doing it that way. But the majority of us, I'm speaking in general, um, that's not going to happen. 
So anyway, you guys can do this. You can buy the bare bones minimum. You can make it work for you and you can knock this out. And uh, like I said, those three things, great attitude, great work ethic and refuse to take no for an answer. And you are golden. Make it happen. Let's do this estimate. Bunch of standing water there, there. It's that whole area right across there. Oh, another area all through here. Big area all through here. Right up toward the front. And then a little bit over there, but he probably don't care about that part. It's mostly all this stuff. So... Let's see what we can do here. We'll find a place to stick you guys. Lean you up against a tree or something. All right, guys, pretty much what I'm doing here, I just have a measuring wheel on an extendable pole, and I'm walking around getting myself some... Uh, general lengths here um what it does is you walk if you guys have never used one of these before it's the, when the wheel turns it's got a little box with a uh with a dial gauge on it and it clicks as you walk and it measures out feet so i just sped up the camera a little bit here and i'm measuring to get myself a rough estimate on the size of the area that i need to cover um i'd run back to my truck and write it down because of course i forgot carrying the camera and the measuring wheel I forgot my clipboard so I'm uh, just drawing out some uh, general a general idea of the size I have to cover which I'm going to show you guys here in a minute um, but uh, these little wheels you can get them dirt cheap like 10 bucks online they sell them for like eight or nine dollars at Harbor Freight you can get them at Home Depot a little more expensive you can get them anywhere they all pretty much do the same exact thing you know some cost more than others some will swear that one brand's better than the other but it really doesn't matter as long as it does what you need to do it's serving the purpose why spend 50 bucks when you can spend 10 bucks our whole uh our whole thing here is to make money remember guys not not spend it out it's got to come in fast and go out slow so get yourself one of these wheels you can measure it out for anything size of a yard mulch anything you want to do and that's all there is to it so what i did is i measure lengthways in all different sections i just use this wheel here that expands out it has a little gauge in here you hit it to reset it back to zero and it measures out in feet and it gives me the length i need and what i do is i draw myself a little diagram 23 foot across that's 13 foot 16 foot 28 foot and that gives me the general areas that I need to cover. Um, and then I know roughly how thick I want it to be um, so that I have enough to fill the areas that are low, but at the same time, I need to, um, at the same time, I need to leave a little extra. So that way I can, uh, Sorry guys, I'm right in here. So that way I can um, leave enough for what's gonna settle. And so what I do is I just make road, house, driveway. So when I'm looking at this sitting at my desk, I know exactly where I'm at and what parts I'm measuring out. Now what I'll do is I'll figure out the square foot of it. I'll figure out how much topsoil I need um, yards wise to fill it in. Um, the square foot times the depth and I'll get what I need. I actually have a calculator <clears throat> did I punch all this into and then I just select on there I can select everything from stone to mulch to topsoil and it'll tell me exactly how much I need and then I just add a little bit extra that way like let's say it tells me I need five yards of topsoil I'm going to figure in for seven yards and that's what my estimate's going to be for that way I give myself the leeway in case I need a little bit more than expected um, I'm covered and I don't have to eat that cost but then at the same time I got to figure in how much grass seed to cover that area and I gotta figure out how much starter fertilizer to cover that area. Um, and that'll give me my all around and then I can do my estimate from there. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's how I do bidding for topsoil. And uh, that's it. We'll keep going.